Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. I'm with Amy Carlson and Amy's an absolute rock star as you're about to see and we're going to get some incredible insights into the writing process. Author of the best seller in nine categories, The Toxin Terminator, Finding Focus and Energy, Renewed Health by Removing Hidden Toxins. More than that, she also is going to be launching the Game Changing Summit, Restore, Renew, Rejuvenate. Incredible speaker, amazing best-selling author, a transformative healer. Amy, welcome to Author Insights. What a wonderful uh, introduction. Thank you, um, Dr. Chekos. That was a lovely, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm, I'm actually super excited to have you because I know the way. Um, you know, I'm being invited to you know, present on your summer. I'm excited to have been part of that project. It's an incredible project, the impact that you're going to be having on the health and lives of the communities that, that you're going to be able to experience this wonderful event. And it's going to be transformative. And I'm, I know that you've put so much into this process. And today I'd like to talk to you both about the summit itself and also about the book. Before we begin though, I'd love to know a little bit of your background, some of your story. So where have you, where have you come from to get to this, you know, rock star position of incredible authority? <laughs> <laughs> that I I tell you what it, it, it everything feels very surreal. I um, I actually owned businesses for better than 30 years. I grew up in the automotive world, in the automotive industry. I used to actually work on cars. I'm a certified mechanic. And uh, about eight years ago, I fell into this kind of accidental process of learning about our overall health, learning about toxins. And eight years ago, I had no idea what a toxin even was, other than we were required to carry material safety data sheets, MSDS forms. So I was very familiar with harmful chemicals and harmful ingredients, but I had no idea it was within our own homes. And I had several health issues going on my entire adult life, and I really had never put two and two together. So when I started learning this eight years ago, I really became passionate about sharing it out to others because if I didn't know about it, then there's a whole lot of other people who also don't know about it. And I wanted to make an impact because just changing things that I used within my home had a huge impact on how I felt and my energy levels and how I'm aging and just my overall health because the CDC tells us that what we eat, how we move, and our environment are the three biggest contributing factors to whether we're going to have a chronic disease or not. So jumping into this whole thing that I do today was quite by accident. I had no intention of doing this. I, I owned our own businesses. I planned on retiring when I sold those. My husband and I were just going to travel and enjoy you know, our hard work, but I've really stepped into my passion and I believe what God intended me to do now. And, and this is what I do. I just share the message. That's beautiful. And, and sometimes synchronicity redirects you know, the course of our life. And that's, that's certainly happened for you because you have, you have gone into a retirement, you've gone into this incredible whirlwind of projects and writing and summits and events and speaking. And, you know, it's, it, it appears to have come in exactly the right way for, for, because it's an outpouring of your, of your purpose that you, you've discovered information that has changed your life. It's impacted yeah. you in these profound and immeasurable ways. And, and now you've got a message to share and that message is compelling you to take actions that you haven't anticipated or planned for, but it's creating this amazing you know, journey for you and this experience to, again, as you said, impact people because of it. So tell me about, okay, so you, you, you started researching, you started learning and, and it resulted in these amazing impacts on your health and a willingness and a desire to share this message. How did it unfold that it would turn into a book? Oh, gosh. So first of all, I first of all, I, I got into a network marketing company. That's that was my first uh, gateway into this healthy lifestyle. And then I really started learning. And about a year ago, I started my own podcast. Um, at the time, I had never even listened to a podcast. I'm like, what is this? But it it gave a voice a larger voice than what I could physically go around doing by having the podcast. So it's been so much of a blessing in my life. I've met so many incredible, incredible people like yourself and others um, that have huge stories as well. 
And I just had this desire, I think, to get it in writing. I wanted to put something down in writing. And so I took a course. I had never written a book before. I had no idea what I was doing. And I just started diving into that whole process. And I believe, like you said, when you, when you jump into your purpose that God intended for us to be, things just start coming together. The pieces all come together. And so it all has happened exactly how it's supposed to do. And I don't view any of this as work. It's truly such a joy to do what I do today. Amazing. And you said you hadn't written a book before. You weren't sure about you know, the process. So how did you write this book? So what was your particular and personal journey of, of getting those thoughts? You know, you, you've been podcasting, you're getting the thoughts into voice, but now you've got to get them into the written word. There's, there's a difference there. So what, what took place to allow you to get that written word down? You know what? Here's the thing that, that was the biggest tip for me in writing the book is the course that I took, what she had us do is take a weekend or perhaps it's a week and you are just going to brain dump. So she had us get various different colors of post-it notes. And I just would write ideas as they came into my head. I just wrote them down and I actually posted them up on the wall. So I had a huge wall area where I just started posting. And so what I could do then is visually, I could start seeing, I could say, you know what, this is an absolute category. So I want to put this on in this color and up here and I could move things in around and the book just unfolded on the wall by doing that. So the ideas were there in my head. I knew I wanted to develop the five pillars of living a toxin-free lifestyle. I w just wasn't sure exactly how I was going to lay that out. And by going through that practice, it was so easy because then, then the, the writing process became very easy because I had the outline. I knew exactly where I was going and it just, it just went. Yeah, that's a beautiful, amazing visual way to be able to bring that book together. I love that idea, actually. Well, and I'm a visual person. I have to, ha I have to see things. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I can see in my head, but when I can get it out into black and, you know, black and white out there, then that, that w really made it so much easier. As if I didn't do that, I'm not sure it would have laid out the way it did. And it's a beautiful way of being able to share it. Share it in terms of recognizing are you visual. Some people write easily on a computer. Other people need to handwrite. Some people need to talk out their book. Um, some people need to have a visual representation. And bring it right. We all have our unique individual and distinct styles and we have to honor those so that we can actually get the message out. Right. And in terms of, you spoke about the pillars, you know, in terms of the toxic free lifestyle. And this is obviously part of the summit that's, that's such an important extension of the book. Tell me about those pillars and, sure. you know, that just bring, bring a brief understanding of what those pillars are and then how they translate into a message that is bigger than the book, i.e. the summit. So start with the message of the, the book though. So I knew, I just took, what did I do? What did I do when I started going down this journey? You know, what were the steps? I had to think back to, because sometimes I think we get so far ahead and we forget what it's like to be back here at the very beginning, right? So I, had, I wanted to go back and think, now what did I do? And, and what I learned was that there were things in the air you know, that were bothering me. So that was one pillar. There were things in the water, <laughs> you know, so uh, there became a second one. There were things that I was going to be absorbing through my skin. That became another pillar. Uh, the food that we eat, you know, we need to look at that, not just the actual food that we're eating, but what, what's in the food. Uh, and that became a fourth pillar. And then a huge transition for me over the last seven years specifically is mind. What's in between, you know, the, this, this spot right here. And, and so I had to have that pillar because our thoughts can be very, very toxic if we allow them to be. And, and so that's what I just remembered. I, I learned these were the steps that I went through and learning how to live this toxin-free lifestyle. And so I want to make it real easy for everybody to follow right along with what I did. Fantastic. And then again, in the book, you go through what changes to make, what the things to do, things to eliminate, and a process to go through, which is great. And, and I said, I've got the book, I've, I've read it, I've left an incredible <laughs> review because I love the book. 
I'm so inspired by what the message you share and the way that you communicate that. Now tell me about, you've taken those pillars, you've got this incredible message and you've brought together an incredible group of speakers to be able to share, help you share this idea, expand that message, the Restore, Renew, Rejuvenate Summer and share with us how you extended the book into the summer. How, how does becoming a best-selling author naturally translate into expanding that message? Well, so the summit is, again, it's just another platform to have this voice and reach even more people um, to impact their life. And the, what I wanted to be able to do in the book, you get tools um, because I talk about in the book, you know, these are the things that you want to avoid. And here's some of the ideas of, of things that I did, you know, in getting good products in my home. Um, but the summit, I wanted to have tools. And so I invited experts that were ha had a little niche in, in what they did, and they had a tool that they can share. As everybody who comes to this summit, I want them to walk away with their toolbox full. I want them to be able to leave that summit and say, wow. I have something I can absolutely implement into my life and start making those small steps that are going to have a huge impact in my overall life because we've got to take those small steps. And so having the book, I already had the ideas formulated. You know, we have to share the knowledge. People need to know exactly what's going on in order for them to even want to make a change. And then we have to give them, you know, here's how we create this healing environment. Here's what we do in order to, for, for our bodies to heal itself. And then here are all of these experts sharing all their modalities. And all of you guys have a personal story as well. We all do. And the stories are the connecting. And that's why I end the book with stories. And then I'm ending the summit with all these personal stories to connect. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I love the way that you've been able to recognise that the book represents the, you know, the knowledge-based education. You've got to bridge the knowledge gap between where they are now with the knowledge of toxicity and the, the issues that cause us and where they would need to be to create healing and health. And then on, then the next stage after giving the knowledge and education, you recognise unless they take action, transformation doesn't result. So you, the toolkit allows you to move from knowledge to the right action to bring about the right results. So you extend the book, a knowledge toolkit, to a actionable toolkit through the summit. So it's the unifying of the expertise and the toolkit with the information they had from the book to allow them to transform their health, their quality of life, to, to restore their health, to renew and rejuvenate their well-being and create the experience of life they like. So it is a beautiful unity between those two approaches. So I just think it's a great that you've done it, you've recognised that, and it's an incredible way of expanding your ability to impact the health and lives of the people that have reached out to you to say, I'd love to learn more about toxicity through your book, and then but what do I do now through the summer? Right, right. And that's, that's, that's the key factor. So many people just don't know where to start. What, you know, where do I start? What do, and, and there's a lot of confusing messaging out there as well. So, you know, we just break it down and make it real simple for them and, you know, give them those tools. There's so many free bonuses and, you know, just so many blessings, you know, with this summit that honestly, people, if they want to restore their health, they want to get into a rejuvenate. I'm 55 with 12 grandkids. I'm not going to, you know, lay down and, and let life pass me by. I want to age gracefully. I don't want to just have a number escalating. I want to live life to the fullest. And I think a lot of people want to do that too. I don't want to be reliant upon a whole bunch of medications. And this book and the summit, you know, help give those tools for you, for you to have that same thing. Yeah, that's beautiful. And again, the thing that I admire most about you, and we spoke about this, during your interview, is you, your servant heart is just, it is bursting. You just love the opportunity to impact people's health, their, their lives, and you know, all of this comes from that place of how, how, can I, how can I help? How can I make an impact? How can I positively influence people's lives? I've, I've seen change in my own life. I now have a compelling message to share. So I'm right. grateful for that. Well, and and um, let me just share a couple of stats with you and, and your audience that, when I researched this information and I researched for this book, 
the numbers are staggering. Six out of 10 adults have a chronic disease and four out of those six have multiple chronic diseases. This is going the wrong way. I had multiple chronic diseases as well. And sometimes I think people don't even realize what a chronic disease is. They don't understand that they're feeling poorly. It creeps up on us over time and we just accept it as, well, everybody feels this way or everybody has this. And I don't accept that. I say, no, <laughs> this is not okay. There is a way to feel better. And that's why we just have to amplify this voice and make it loud and clear, you know, that there's, there's another solution out there if you choose to have it. Beautiful. I mean, that sounds like this is your stand against deterioration of health, aging, and you're not willing to, for yourself, do that. And now you're on a, a mission to be able to make sure people don't have to suffer unnecessarily in their own lives. And so it's it's a calling. It's a, it's <laughs> a need to, to have an impact, to leave a legacy. So that's beautiful. Now, before we wrap this up, and I'm going to ask for a little message again, but I want to ask a question because what really excited me one not, was not only your book, which was amazing, and I'm so grateful that you wrote it. Uh, I wanted to know what you did because, as I said, I use the term rock star to describe what you achieved because so many people write a book and it, it drops away on the Amazon list or it doesn't get out to very many people and it doesn't have the impact that they'd like. They, they like you, have a mission, a vision, they are moved to do something, they pour their heart into this book and nothing happens. They don't get to have the reach of that life. But you've done something incredible. A bestseller on its own is a wonderful thing, but a bestseller in nine different categories. So I'd love to hear, you know, what is it that you did? How did you go about the process of writing such a powerful and compelling book that created such a dramatic impact and, and rose to the top? of the, the bestseller status. So I'd love to hear right. your, your marketing process, your promotional processes. Right. Um, yeah, share this with us, please. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, we have to be diligent. We, you know, we, we can put tools together all that we want, but if we're not going to get it out to the world so that they can hear that message, then they're not going to do any good. So I did several different things. Number one is I created a book launch. So I had this whole movement around launching the book and this is just the ebook. I will do it again when the print version comes out. And so what I did is I asked people to join my launch team. I have an email list. I, I went to them. I went to my social media and I just had them say, hey, if you're in, then they went in and they joined a link into my um, website so that the day that it launched, I could shoot out a text message or an email to them and said, we're live. Go grab yourself a copy because when we first uh, released it, it was 99 cents. And we did that on purpose, uh, many different things. And I'll get into the marketing aspect of it. So that was number one, you have to create the excitement. Now, before we even got to launch, the other thing too is I took everybody along the journey with me. I snapped pictures of me writing. I snapped pictures of my post-it notes. I made posts out onto my social media, my groups with that. I, they came along the journey with me the whole entire way. So this was no surprise when we came out with the launch for the book. And I think that's really important because people want to feel like they're part of it. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. was key there. Then when we actually were getting ready to launch, you need to research your categories. Um, there are categories that uh, I would love to see bestseller in and, and just know that at a time they will come. So you have to research your categories. And I spent an entire day going through the category because there's literally hundreds of categories within Amazon. And so I, I just spent time studying them, seeing who was hitting bestseller in there. There's, you know, bestseller, hot new release, number one new release. There's all those kinds of um, banners that you can get. And just figuring out where, what's my topic about? That's key because don't just go putting your book out into a category because you think you can hit bestseller in it. You want it to, you know, be in line with your message. So that's what I did is I went through and I chose categories that I felt like I had a chance to hit bestseller in. And the beauty about it is once you start ranking 
in say one category, Amazon recognizes this and they were putting me into categories that I hadn't even selected and I was ranking in. <laughs> so, you know, that's when you get this momentum going, then that's what happens. So, um, you know, take the, take your viewer, take your audience along the journey with you. And then um, so that they can be just as excited about it as you are and then create that launch team and, and get that momentum behind you. And that's absolutely genius. And it's, and again, it's, it took effort, it took planning, yeah. you put the time into it, you created that, that the launch team around there and, and you offered them yeah, an easy pathway. Again, you shared the post, you allowed them the message to be easily accessible, easily disseminated and therefore for your message to be by people who cared about you, about your story, about the impact you're having to be able to share that. And again, it becomes an exponential process rather than you being the only person sharing the message, a whole team of people who love you, what you do are behind your vision and your project. Right. Um, part right. Of it. And share right. It so it goes out and it's a one line like that. It's outwards like this. There's a beautiful opportunity to impact. And then on top of that, again, you, you bring the summit into that as well so that you've got an opportunity for people to be involved in the project of right. the extended project of the book and therefore a, a desire to share that as well. So it's, a, it's an incredible overarching plan has had an incredible impact and I might not say a deserved impact because you know it's, it's one thing a person writing a book that they want to write a best-seller book because they want to have a bestseller. Right. But the difference between I'm on a mission and I need to get this message out there and it deserves the status it receives because people believe in the book because people believe in the project and because you have done such a good job with it so right. And don't you as the author forget that either. You know, when I first launched the book, I felt like I was kind of in this mindset of, oh, go buy my book. I, I, you know, please help support me. I was in kind of that mindset. And I actually have a coach, you know, a mindset coach. And she's like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Where's this coming from? You've got something of value. You need to talk to your audience about what are they going to get? when they purchase your book. You know, so don't forget, sometimes even as an author and a producer of the summit and the, and the podcast, it's easy to get into that mindset sometimes of, well, who am I, <laughs> you know, to be, you know, doing all of this and saying all of this, well, who am I not to? Who am I not to be the one saying this and doing this? And, and just remember that um, when a seed is planted, there is something of value and you need to make sure that your audience is understanding what they're going to receive from your podcast, your book, your summit. It's about them. It's not about me. That's beautiful. And I think every, every person, whether it be a, a practitioner or even a person who wants to share their story with the community, who, who may not have the medical background, but has the knowledge and research that knowledge and because of their own journey has become an expert in the ability to share a story and, and compelling information. Oftentimes they get to this point of uncertainty of, do I have anything really worthwhile sharing or do I have the ability to even write this? And I know that, you know, you're not a, a writer. You became a writer by virtue of a story that you wanted to share. And you would have also faced those demons of uncertainty and, and, and unbelief. Had, what, what was your experience that w when you questioned yourself? Did you ever question yourself and how did you overcome oh, Absolutely, all the time. And, and here's the other thing too, is surround yourself with support. When, you know, that's the one thing about, my dad has always said about me, Amy, I don't care what it is that you're trying to do or you're looking to do. If you're scared to death, you still go forward and do it. You do not let fear stop you. And that I think is the big difference between say me and someone else. I can be scared to death. When I public speak, if you were backstage, you would see somebody shaking like a leaf, um, you know, because it terrifies me because I do have that servant's heart and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying the words that they need to hear, you know, at this given moment. So just do it scared, but surround yourself. I, I uh, was in a group of other authors. There's 27 of us that are all launching a book. We all are together and supporting each other. So get that support of someone else who's doing the same thing. I joined that group, it was a class and, and we've all just really rallied around each other. Um, 
you know, sometimes your, your biggest support doesn't come from maybe your family, but find that support and don't be afraid to buy, you know, or not buy, but purchase and invest in yourself. If you don't know how to write, I took a course, you know, I didn't come up with the post-it note idea myself. I took a course in order to learn how to write a book because I felt like I needed this in order to get my message across. So that's an investment in you. That's an investment in your future and what you have to offer out to the world. And, you know, th those would be the things that I would say. And I'm terrified of many things, many things. And you just do it anyway. Oh, that's beautiful. That's great. To, to bring this to a conclusion, I go, I'm so grateful for your message and it, it is inspiring, it is empowering, and again, it's an important message. If there was a, you know, you, you spoke about just doing it, you've already shared the message with what the practitioner needs to do in order to move forward. What about the aspect of finding the story? Now, you, you went through your own personal journey to realise that you had a message to share. People often have this thought, oh, I'm just me, I'm, I'm nothing special, I'm not as a surgeon who's changing lives or, or saving lives. Um, you know, I've got a practice and it's okay, it does well, or you know, I've been able to help a few people, but I don't know, I don't, I don't have this compelling life-changing message that really is in a book. What would you say to those people who you know, feel like they don't have the story within them to share? Well, first of all, I would say you need to take some time and figure out what your superpower is. You know, you need to take a step back because maybe God's blessed you with the gift of listening. Maybe God's blessed you with the gift of teaching. Maybe God has blessed you with the gift of hosting. Everybody's been blessed with a gift and you can call it a superpower. You can call it whatever you want, but you have a superpower. You were designed for greatness and you just need to figure out what that is and tap into it. What brings you joy? Not only yourself, but it, in bringing your, your own joy, what, when you do it, how is that serving your community and, and the people around you? Because if it's altering your life and others' life, that's probably your superpower. What do you get asked to do a lot of? You know, there, so take some time and really dig in and figure those things out for yourself because that's where your story is going to be surrounded by. That is beautiful. I mean, everybody, I certainly believe everybody has a story to tell. And I think what you said earlier is, who am I not to tell my story? And we may question ourselves, but you, everyone will have a superpower. Everybody has that uniqueness within them and therefore their capacity yeah. to be able to, to, to be impact people's lives in a far more profound way than they ever imagined possible. I, I love the way you encapsulated that. So, and Carson, yeah. thank you for your time. And, you know, the, the word doctor translates uh, from Latin to mean teacher. And so it is a very in interesting word and is often overused in, in health professionals, I believe, because they, they don't always do what the, the purpose of a, a doctor is. So I would like to bestow upon you an honorary doctor title today because you are teaching the world how to heal, how to be well. You are changing lives and the health of their lives in a profound and powerful way. Dr. Amy Carson, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here today. I'm grateful for your story and grateful for the impact you've had on the world. Thank you very much. Oh, such an honor to be able to share with you. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Look forward to talking again soon.